Bill Duran from Punished Props. Welcome to the prop shop. My shopmate, Will, needed a copy made of his head. He's going to be sculpting a helmet and wanted a perfect representation of his noggin to sculpt the helmet on. So we decided to make a life cast of his melon. There are many ways to do this and we opted for alginate. If you want, you could make a silicone mold, but we went with alginate because it is a little bit cheaper. The downside is you only get one pull from the mold. So we scurried on down to our local pottery and sculpture supply store in Seattle, and we picked up AlgaSafe alginate from SmoothOn, a whole bunch of plaster bandages, and some hydrocal. If you can't find this stuff locally, it can be purchased on the internet. In fact, I've got links down below where you can buy it yourself. We also needed things like Vaseline, a bald cap or a swimmer's cap, a power drill with a mixing squirrel, and some very large buckets to mix all of our materials in. Before I get started on the process, I would like to point out that this took us two tries. That's right, we royally screwed up on the first one and learned a whole bunch from the process. The first thing you wanna do is get a team of about three people to help you out. These need to be people that you trust because they're going to be encasing your head in a solid material. Also make sure that these friends have watched this video and researched all of the materials so that they know what to expect during the process. Then you can get started. First, you wanna pre-cut all of your plaster bandages. It doesn't hurt to cut out too many of them. That way you don't have to cut out new ones while you are applying them. Make sure that you have several of them that are long enough to go from shoulder to shoulder over the head. These will be used to create a nice seam between the front and back of the mother mold. Then take your model and put them in their attractive swimmer's cap and then cover their face and bust area with a whole bunch of Vaseline. This will make sure that nothing sticks to them and they can get the mold off later on. Then get enough water and alginate ready to go according to the instructions on the box. With your water in the bucket, go ahead and dump the alginate powder in as you mix it with your power drill. This is kind of like making a cake batter by adding your solid ingredients to the blender as it's going. Keep mixing it up, making sure that you don't get any big lumps. Do this for mm, about a minute or so, but don't dally because you do have a very short window time to work with the alginate. Then get your team together and start smearing the alginate goo all over your model's face. Make sure, as I demonstrate here, to not put it in your model's nose. Like this, and smear it up mm. <laughs> right, in, right into his nose, I'm sorry. I got it. Okay. I got it. I'm going in your nose. <laughs> what you'll end up doing is sort of pushing and smearing the alginate into all of the facial details to make sure you pick all of that up. You'll also be fighting gravity. This stuff will want to sort of slough off your model but you gotta keep sort of pushing it back up and piling it on because you want a uniform thickness over the entire head. You only have about five minutes here to get that all done, so having many hands makes it work really, really well. When we screwed up the first time, we ended up with a couple of areas that didn't get enough love and were too thin, including just under the chin. About five minutes in, you will notice the alginate start to firm up a little bit. Once it starts to happen, your clock is ticking. Make sure that the thinner areas get covered as well as you can. And then once it sets up, you're done. Just stop. You can't pile it on. In fact, once the alginate has set, you can't mix up another batch and add it on later. It will not stick. Now that your friend's head is completely encased in alginate, make sure that they can still breathe and that they're doing okay. Also, this is a wonderful time to have an alginate fight with your brother. Hey Rob. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, 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 no. How's it fight? Oh, God. Ha, ha, ha. Oh. My mouth is open. <laughs> With all of the funny business out of the way, you can start on the rigid mother mold. We ended up doing the back of the mother mold first, but I would recommend going with the front of it first. Start by putting a really nice thick seam down the middle of the head from shoulder to shoulder. Later on, this will provide a registration point for when you're putting the two halves back together to pour your final casting. I also recommend having one person man the bucket while they dunk their plaster bandages in the water 
squeegee them off a little bit, and then hand them to the other two people who are applying them to your friend's head. They will want to make sure and rub the plaster in so that it gets nice and solidified into one big old piece. And a couple of uh, layers of that should do the trick. Once one side is good and starts to set up, you'll feel it get kind of rigid and you can smear a whole bunch of Vaseline all along the seam for applying the other half so that they don't stick together. Once the seam is all prepared, you can then apply the other half of the mother mold. Again, soaking and squeegeeing off plaster bandages. And I would start by overlapping the seam line by just a little bit. Just a little bit, not a lot, because you've got to get that apart later on. Again, your team will be applying these plaster bandages all over, making sure that you get good, nice coverage. And a couple layers should do just fine there as well. Again, make sure you don't cover the nostrils. This is your model's lifeline, and if you do cover it, then they will suffocate. But I'm sure they'll let you know that's happening before they pass out. About 10 to 20 minutes after that, you can crack off the back of the mold. Hopefully it'll come right apart. If not, you may need to pry it just a little bit with a screwdriver like I did. Do take care not to poke your model with the screwdriver. Now it's time to take the entire mold off of your friend's head and torso. Start by cutting a T-shaped line into the alginate. You can cut your T using a dull butter knife. Again, be very careful not to cut your friend. I feel like I shouldn't have to say that, but I'm gonna. The cross of the T should be a little bit back from the seam. You don't want those to line up perfectly. And it should go about, I don't know, eight inches across centered on the head. The bottom of the T should go all the way down the spine and cut right to the bottom of the alginate, straight down. That way you'll have a place for your friend to get their head out of the mold. It should also keep the mold from tearing too much. There may be a little bit of tearing, you'll have to play it by ear as it goes. Now is the most hard part. You've got to pull that off, leaving the front of the mother mold on the mold. That way it's got a little bit of support. Using your entire team and going very slowly, start pulling it off your friend's head. If the model can flex his face a whole bunch, then that'll help release it from the inside of the mold and really patiently slide it off your friend's head. When it does come off, you can fold the back alginate flaps into the mold and then go grab the back of the mother mold, slap that thing right back on top of there and quickly tape it up with a little bit of duct tape so that it stays together temporarily. Then turn the entire mold facing up and carefully place the alginate flaps back in place to complete the mold on the inside. To keep it together a little bit more permanently, I liked driving some drywall screws right through that thick seam along the sides of the mold, but make sure the screws don't go all the way into the mold. Then take any type of clay and plug up those nostrils. They were used for breathing before, but now you need them to be filled up so that the hydrocal does not escape through them. And just like that, you are ready to start casting and you gotta cast right away too. That alginate won't last but an hour. So fill up one of your five gallon buckets roughly halfway and start dumping handfuls of hydrocal in. You don't want to mix it right away because that'll activate it. So you just keep dumping handfuls in until it sort of reaches the surface and kind of ends up with a dry lake bed looking effect. Start mixing up the hydrocal by hand, very slowly and gently, taking care to squish any lumps that you find in there. After a couple of minutes, you should end up with a consistency much like a smoothie or a milkshake. At this point, it's time to pour it in the mold, but be very gentle. You don't want to disturb the flaps that you have on the alginate on the inside and you don't want to splash it anywhere so carefully pour it in the mold very very gently once you've filled up the mold you can reach in with your hand and try and make sure there aren't any bubbles or pockets of air inside the mold and if you're happy with it then you can let it go it's good to go just leave it there and let it cure we did it overnight and by the time we showed up in the morning it was rock solid ready to go you don't need to worry too much about the mold because it's a one-time use you can unscrew it, tear it apart, throw it away, do whatever, and then start peeling off chunks of alginate. And what you'll find underneath is a perfect copy of your friend's face. Once it has been liberated from the mold, you can clean it up a little bit. A lot of times the seams will be showing a bunch, so you can take something like a rasp and just grind that crap right down. And you'll have a nice, pretty looking head that is exactly the same size 
as your friend. Ta-da! So that's it, folks. That's exactly how you make a copy of your friend's head using Alginet. I'd like to thank Will over at WM Armory com for being our guinea pig while we all learn how to do a little bit of life casting. I'd also like to thank his girlfriend Taylor for helping out and my wife Brittany and my brother Rob and his wife Jamie. They were all troopers for sticking through on our two attempts. I'd also like to thank you for tuning in and learning a little bit about life casting here. I've done a whole bunch of other tutorial videos in the past and I'm doing a whole bunch more in the future so be sure you subscribe because you won't want to miss out. If you've got any questions, let me know down in the comments below, or you can bug me on Facebook, facebook.com slash punish props, or on Twitter at Chinbeard. Thanks again, folks. Go out there and make a copy of your head. It's just there are too many cooks in the kitchen. Right? Cut his balls! <laughs> <laughs> no. No, seriously. I'll play, uh, no one is paying any attention to his genitals right now. Since the Vaseline is is a barrier between those two, we're just gonna have to take like a chisel, not like a flat edge. No, 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 I mean, it's like a chisel. I, mean, uh, uh, I think that will not, cover. not jab no, 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 no. in the neck. No. <laughs> That's a it actually night. hurts more to get stabbed with a blunt object. For example, <laughs> Bill once stabbed me with a spoon. <laughs> I like that you automatically assume he deserved it. All right. It sounds like diarrhea. Oh my God. There was the there was the hot push. What?